Modern chemical databases like the Cambridge Structural Database that you can see here contain a wealth of information about the relationship between chemical bonding and molecular geometry. For example, if you look at the Cambridge Structural Database, you can call it up directly from your notes. Every one of these entries is a unique molecular structure. You'll be able to see the three-dimensional view of that structure. Let's focus, for example, on carbon. If we look at this carbon atom here, we can see that it's bound to four other atoms with single bonds. And we can immediately use the, Cambridge, the information in the Cambridge Structural Database to determine that the geometry there is nearly the ideal tetrahedral geometry of 109.7 degrees. If we were to examine thousands of carbon, carbon, carbon bond fragments from the Cambridge Structural Database and asked how the distance between a carbon-carbon bond, which is related to whether it's a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond, correlates to the angle, the carbon-carbon-carbon bond angle, theta. And if we made a plot where the intensity of the plot or the color of the plot corresponded to how many fragments we found, red being probably thousands of fragments, blue probably being very close to zero, amazingly, we find that almost all of the data falls into just three categories. And these correspond to the three types of molecular geometry that's available to organic compounds. Over here, if we were to examine these structures, what we would find is that they almost all contain four electron pair domains. If we were to look at the fragments corresponding to the geometry here, we'd find that almost all of them contain three electron pair domains. And finally, if we were to look at all of the fragments corresponding to the population of fragments that are shown here, we'd find that these correspond to two electron pair domains. Notice what the geometries are. We see that the angle plotted along this axis is close to linear geometry, 179 degrees, with the shortest bond length, 1.19 angstroms. The geometry for that center set of data correspond nearly to trigonal planar geometry. Trigonal planar geometry is going to have an angle very close to 120 degrees. And finally, the geometry that we find for this very large set of data, the fragments that show up here in red, we see that the angle is a little bit larger, but not too far off from that ideal tetrahedral geometry of 109 degrees. And so immediately we see from this data that there's a correlation between the number of electron pair domains, two, three, or four, and geometry, linear, trigonal planar, or tetrahedral. So using the data in the Cambridge Structural Database, we can directly see that there's a relationship between the number of electron pair domains for carbon and the geometry. Four, three, and two correspond to tetrahedral, trigonal planar, and linear. We don't need to worry about hybridization in this table just yet, except to note that we're going to see hybridization is also going to be directly related to the number of electron pair domains. As soon as we identify how many electron pair domains, we know geometry and we also know hybridization.